So we're going to cover uh, today chapter two. We're going to start uh, chapter two on page 35. It's about graphical summaries of data. So uh, we're going to have something like this. This is uh, where your uh, chapter starts. And we're going to start seeing tables like this. So we're going to see a lot of numbers uh, most of the time. So we need to have a way to visualize uh, these numbers uh, to have an idea of uh, of the properties that the uh, sample, if this is a sample, uh, has, or if the, those numbers are from a population, uh, about the properties that the population may exhibit. So we're going to need to to get uh, a graphical representation of our data. But before uh, doing that, we need to remember that we have two kinds of data. The most important, uh, the most important classification is when you have your data and you might have uh, qualitative data or quantitative data. So in the first case, remember this is categorical data, usually labels. And also in the case of quantitative data, this is, uh, these are numerical data. So usually just numbers as numbers. So what are the ways that we're going to use to visualize these different kind of data? Well, there are going to be uh, many different kinds of graphs, but the most important ones are going to be for a qualitative data. We're going to use bar plots, bar plots, and oh, pie charts. By charts and for numerical data we're going to use mostly histograms histograms or sometimes frequency uh, polygons frequency polygons but the most important ones are the bar plots and the histograms they look uh, like, like the same they are just bar uh, bars in both cases the only difference is that in one case you are uh, depicting categorical data in the other case you are the showing uh, numerical data so we're going to need to start with uh, some definitions that are in your book uh, on page um, 36 so if you open your book on page 36 you're going to find two definitions that we're going to uh, just write for our notes one is the frequency and the other definition is about the frequency distribution. So I'm just going to copy the definition for our notes. So first, the frequency. The frequency of a category uh, is the number of times. Is the number of times. It occurs in the data set. It occurs in the data set. And then we have a frequency distribution. A frequency distribution is a table, is a table that presents the frequency that presents the frequency for each category for each category so we need these two definitions to understand the process that we're going to follow to visualize our data so we're going to start with our data then you're going to create a frequency distribution a frequency a distribution and then you're gonna get your plot so in the process you're gonna need to know whether you're uh, dealing with a uh, categorical data or uh, numerical data so we're gonna start uh, constructing frequency distributions as a first step so we're gonna work example 2.1 so example 2.1 is on page 36. 
So we're going to start with that example. So let's read example. So we have here uh, example 2.1 and it says the following. We're going to construct a frequency distribution for the data in table 2.1. So we need to look for table 2.1. This is the table. So we have types of credit card used. So this is a, a list of uh, uh, labels. So we have Discover, Visa, American Express, Visa, MasterCard, Visa, Visa, and so on. So we have 50 uh, customers, uh, 50, 50 customer uh, credit cards. So this is the result of a survey. So they were asking, uh, they asked uh, 50 people about the credit card that they used. And these were the responses. So if you see the table, you don't have any idea what credit card is the most used and, or what is the least used. So we need a, a graph to visualize the, this data. So, and that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to show you the process and then you're going to do it uh, by yourself later. So we have, uh, I'm going to write here what we're going to do. We're going to construct a frequency distribution, a frequency distribution for the data for the data on in table in table 2.1 so we're gonna we're gonna do the following we're gonna need to organize our uh, information so i'm going to write here credit card then i'm going to uh, have room for my tally i'm going to tally and then i'm going to get at the end the corresponding frequency so we do this by hand so if you check the table you're gonna see that we have uh, a master car label we have another label with visa then American Express and finally Discover. So there were four different categories. So these are the categories. The categories. So we're going to go through the table and we're going to start uh, doing a tally thing. So you go to the table. So you go to the table and you see, for example, Discover. Then you mark uh, a tally in Discover. And then you put a check mark here. Then you have Visa. Then you do the same thing in the row corresponding to Visa. And you put a check mark here. Then you go and check American Express. So uh, American Express is here. So uh, and put a check mark. So why don't you do? Uh, why don't you complete this uh, work? And then we're gonna sh uh, we're gonna share our results. I'm going to give you. Uh, a little time for you to complete the the tally and then we're going to compare uh, results so i'm going to stop a little bit the recording for you to do it so i finished my tally and um, i just got these uh, marks here so i'm going to count uh, uh, the number of tally marks so i have 5 10 11 for mastercard then i have uh, 23 for uh, Visa, then I'm getting a uh, nine for American Express, and finally seven for Discover. So the problem uh, asks us to uh, to get the frequency distribution. So we're going to construct a frequency distribution. So we need to write then the the final answer. The final answer is just the category and its frequency so i'm going to have something like this so i have uh, the credit card and the frequency so i'm just going to copy the final results 11 23 9 and 7 so this is 
a frequency distribution. So this is a frequency distribution. Sometimes you're going to find this in your books as a, a frequency table, but that's what it is. So now we have another definition on page 37. So the definition that we have is now the relative frequency and we are given a formula. I'm going to write this down for you and for your notes. And also another definition is going to be a relative frequency distribution. So let me copy the this information in, in the notes. So the first one is the relative frequency. The relative frequency uh, of a category of a category is the frequency is the frequency of the category uh, divided by the sum divided by the sum of all the frequencies all the frequencies so the formula is just uh, relative frequency is going to be the frequency for any category divided by the sum of all frequencies. So this is just the total frequency, a frequency divided by the total frequency. So then we have another definition is a relative uh, frequency distribution a relative frequency distribution uh, is another table is a table that presents that presents the relative frequency the relative frequency uh, of each category of each ca category. So that's, those are the two definitions that we're going to incorporate into our background. So now we're going to work example 2.2. So example 2.2 is on page, example 2.2 on page 37. So let's read the problem. So we have here Example 2.2, so we have, uh, we're going to construct a relative frequency distribution for the data in table 2.2. So what is the, the data in table 2.2? Is just the result from our previous example. So table 2.2 is just the frequency distribution that we obtained uh, for the, the previous problem. So MasterCard 11, Visa 23, American Express 9 and discover seven. So this is a frequency distribution. Now we're going to create the relative frequency distribution corresponding to this information. So let's do that. So I'm going to, uh, I'm, we're going to need to use uh, our uh, frequency distribution that we obtained. So we need to write again, credit card. We're going to write the frequency that we obtain from a previous step. So we have MasterCard, Visa, American Express, and Discover, 11, 23, 9, and 7. And then we're going to compute the relative frequency. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing is we need the total frequency. So we're going to need to add, I'm going to use this symbol to indicate a sum. So anytime that you use this, this is a, a Greek letter. Uh, 
is a Greek letter corresponding corresponding to a capital a capital S. So that means sum. So we're gonna sum these frequencies to get the total frequency. So we can use just R or you can use any calculator. So uh, what I have at hand is just my my R console, so I can use the R console to to do this job. So I'm going to add 11, uh, 23, 9, and 7. So the total frequency is 50, and we knew that because the problem indicator they were uh, the responses from 50 uh, customers. So then now we need to find the relative frequency. The relative frequency is going to be the frequency divided by the total frequency for each category. So the first one is 11 over 50. The second one is going to be 23 over 50. Then it's going to be 9 over 50. Then it's going to be 7 over 50. So we're going to find these values and those are going to be the relative frequency. So you're going to use again any calculator can work or use the language. So we have 11 over 50, 23 over 50, uh, 9 over 50, and finally 7 over 50. So we have in the first case 0 0.22, then 0 0.46, 0 0.18, and finally 0 0.14. So just copy those values into our notes, and those are going to be the values for the relative frequency. If you add up these four values, you should get one or a value that is very, very close to one. So when you add frequencies, the relative frequencies, you're going to get uh, one. So this chapter is about graphical summaries. We haven't uh, gotten any graph yet, but we need to do some work before in preparation of the graph. So, and this is the, the work that we needed. We needed frequencies. So, and we needed relative frequencies to be able to to, to get uh, to get graphs so uh, we're gonna start now uh, doing that but uh, I need you to, I need you to uh, understand the way that R works uh, with the different list of numbers you already know that because in the previous chapter we started uh, using lists so we're gonna write here list in R so if you remember, for example, the last time we were able to indicate a list of numbers uh, from 1 through uh, 40. Remember, we did that the last time. We just did it in this way, x equals 1 through 40. So we call this a sequence. This is a sequence. So it's just a list, a collection of numbers that uh, that usually are uh, consecutive numbers. So that's that's one way. The, the first way then is a sequence. The second way is just you're gonna enumerate the the enumerate the members of the list. So you enumerate each value. So in the sequence, you just provided the, the lower and the upper limits or boundaries of your sequence. And in the second case, we're going to enumerate. So for example, to get the list of numbers from 1 through 40, is going to be just lower KC. Don't forget this is a lower KC. I'm going to 
lowercase c. And you enumerate, so you start 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, and you continue until you get 40. So that's another way to uh, enter a, a list. So, and finally, uh, the third one is when you want to enter labels. So you can uh, uh, you can have a list of labels. So when you are working in categorical variables, for example, for example, in the case that now we're going to work with credit cards, you might be interested in having the labels American Express. Mastercard, uh, Visa, and Discover. So labels require quotation marks. Don't forget the quotation marks because in that way you are telling R that you are entering labels. So we need quotation marks to indicate labels. So let's uh, start with our first uh, graph. So this graph is going to be uh, uh, from example, uh, we have example 2.3. So we're going to start with bar graphs. So we're going to start uh, now we're going to uh, get a graphical summaries of categorical data. So that's important, categorical data. Uh, data. And this is going to be our first one is bar graphs or bar plots. So this is on page 38. So you're gonna we're gonna use a very simple uh, command in R. So the command that we're gonna use is just um, bar plot. So in R you're gonna use bar plot you're gonna provide the frequencies and then you're gonna provide uh, the categories so we're gonna say names dot r equals uh, the different labels so we need just frequencies and it's uh, the corresponding label. So this is the command that we're going to use in R. So let's apply this. So we're going to uh, solve example 2.3 on page 38. So we have here 2.3 on page 38, it says that the example is construct a frequency bar graph and a relative frequency bar graph for the credit card data in table 2.3. So what is table 2.3? Table 2.3 is just uh, summarizing the results from the two previous problems. So it's just the frequency distribution and the relative frequency distribution. So we have both frequencies, uh, frequency distributions uh, in the same table. So we have the credit card, we have the frequencies, and we have the relative frequencies. So I'm going to copy that information. So, and then we're going to be able to, to solve the problem. So let's see. So we have for this problem a table. 
So I'm doing this many times for you to have your notes com complete. So we have credit cards on credit card. Then we have frequency and we have a relative frequency. Okay, so we have a MasterCard, Visa, American Express, and Discover. What we have is the values 11, 23, 9, and 7, 0 0.22, 0 0.46, 0 0.18, and 0 0.14. So for us to be able to, to build these graphs, we needed to process the, the data before. Remember, the original data was just a collection of labels, responses from 50 customers. And then by creating the frequency distribution now, we're going to be able to visualize our data. So this is table uh, 2.3 on page. 38. So we're going to use R to put this information into a graph. So we're going to define variables. We're going to start with credit cards. So I'm just going to write CC for credit card. And this is going to be the collection of four labels. So order matters. I'm going to respect this order uh, and also for the corresponding numerical value. So MasterCard is the first one. Then Visa is the second one, and American Express the third one, and finally Discover, and I close the parentheses. Then I need a variable for the frequencies. I'm going to use just frec, and I'm going to write the corresponding values, 11, 23, 9, and 7, and then relative frequency relative frequency rel frec is going to be just 0 0.22 0 0.46 0 0.18 oh, sorry I, I forgot one value and 0 0.14 and then I close the parentheses here okay so I have my my values there and then we're gonna use bar plot bar plot and we're going to start with the uh, relative uh, we're going to build first the frequency bar graph so it's going to be just frequency comma then I, I need to write names arc so this is you need to write this at, in this way na names dot arc and this is going to be the labels. The labels are in, in a variable CC. Then, if you want to see the your both plots at this uh, at, at the same time, we're going to use X11 parentheses to open a new window. This is to open a, another um, graphical window because if we don't do this then when you call the next bar plot the first one is going to disappear uh, if you don't don't care about the other plot then you just write bar plot and don't write x11 but if you want to keep both plots at the same time especially if you are solving your your homework or your classwork i would like to see both plots so you're going to take a screenshot of both so then you need to use x11 anytime that you create a new plot uh, to prevent erasing the previous one. So then the second uh, bar graph is going to be uh, constructed with bar plot again, but now we're going to use relative frequencies, so rel frec, and then we're going to use names dot r, and again the labels are in CC. So this is what we're going to do now. Let's check what happens. So let's see if we are going to be able to, to get uh, the corresponding uh, graphs.
So we start with the labels CC, lowercase c, and then we're going to use quotation marks. So MasterCard, then we have Visa, then we have American Express, and then we have Discover. You can use the labels in the way that you want. You can write completely Discover or American Express, it's up to you. So those are the labels, then I have the frequencies. So the frequencies are 11, 23, 9, and 7. And the relative frequencies are, again, with lowercase c, indicating that this is a collection of values, 0 0.22, 0 0.46, uh, 0 0.18, and finally, 0 0.14. So those are, uh, that's the information that I need. So I'm going to start with the first one. The, the frequency bar graph. So it's bar plot. Then I'm going to call frequencies. And then I'm going to write names dot arg equals cc. And that is going to be the first uh, bar plot. So now we have the first uh, visual representation of our data. Uh, and those are frequency. The y-axis is frequency, the x-axis are the categories. Then I want to keep this plot, so I'm going to create to call x11 uh, parentheses, and that is going to give me another another window for, uh, for the other plot that I'm going to call now, bar plot, now I'm going to use relative frequencies. And I'm going to use names r equals cc, and then I'm going to uh, look for th those graphical. So I'm going, I'm going to Windows, and I have now two graphical devices. So you can see the first one was this. We can move this to the left. And then you call the second one, the relative frequency, here. And now you have both graphs at the same time. Uh, they look the same because they are coming from the same data. The only different difference is the y-axis. In this case, you have frequencies. And in the second case, you have relative frequencies. So that's... Um, uh, what you're going to need to know about uh, uh, these uh, bar graphs. There is going to be another uh, graph that we're going to cover now. Uh, so uh, let's take a short break and, this, and we're going to continue with the next graphs. So now we're going to see uh, another bar graph that is similar to the previous one with a slightly slight difference. So the, those are Pareto charts. Uh, they are also bar graphs, but the categories are plotted uh, according to the frequencies in descending order. So we're going to work now example uh, 2.4, uh, which is on page uh, 39. And you can see just here the, the problem. The problem says that we're going to construct a relative relative frequency Pareto chart for the data in table 2.3. So we're going to use the same data as before. So we're going to use the table that is showing both the frequencies and the relative frequencies. So but now for a Pareto chart, you need to order the credit cards uh, as a function of the relative frequency. So in this case, so we're going to create a, uh, another uh, label. So you're going to say, say that you have now Pareto credit cards are going to be just the labels, but now in, in, in the order. Uh, and we're going to need the relative frequencies for Pareto charts. So Pareto relative frequencies 
And you can get also the Pareto chart with the frequency, so we can have also Pareto frequency. So let's do everything at the same time. So we're going to open three collection of values. So what is the highest, uh, what is the credit, card, the credit card with the highest frequency? So you can see here that Visa is the one that has the highest uh, frequency. That frequency is 23 and the corresponding relative frequency is 0 0.46. Now in second place goes MasterCard. So I'm going to write MasterCard and then the corresponding frequency is 11 in one case and 0 0.22 in the second case. Now what is the next credit card? The next credit, credit card is just American Express. American Express with 9 of frequency and with 0 0.18 relative frequency. And finally, Discover. We close here. Discover has 7 as frequency and 0 0.14 as its relative frequency. So now we have uh, uh, the the values in descending order with respect to frequency. So now we can create two, two, two Pareto uh, charts or graphs. So the first one is going to be, uh, we're going to use uh, again X11 because we're going to keep the previous plots. And now we're going to use bar plot is going to be, uh, we're going to use now Pareto frequency and now the labels are going to be different now instead of CC uh, we had CC before now we have PCC PCC for Pareto so we need to be very careful otherwise we're going to match different uh, frequencies with different uh, labels or categories then we're going to open another window so, and then we're going to call again bar plot now with the Pareto relative frequency and then names R equals PC, PCC. And let's do this in R and with that we're going to finish the, the corresponding uh, problem uh, example 2.4. So let's go to R, and now we're going to enter uh, PCC is just uh, Visa, and then MasterCard, then American Express, and finally um, Discover. So those are my labels for the Pareto chart. Then I have the Pareto frequencies are going to be 23, 11, 9, and 7. You can see that they are in descending order. Then we have the Pareto relative frequencies and they are 0 0.46, 0 0.22, 0 0.18, and finally 0.14. So I have now my new um, variables. So I'm going to uh, call a, another uh, window for graphs and I click back here. Then I'm going to call the Pareto frequency and names that are equals PCC this time and then I'm going to call again X11 for the second plot and then I'm going to call back here I'm just going to get here P uh, relative frequency so I have now two more plots let's check them so first I have um, let's see this is the Pareto chart using frequencies so I'm going to move it here and then I have here uh, 
here the Pareto chart using relative frequency. So now you have these bars plotted in descending order of frequency or relative frequency. So you can just compare the Pareto chart with uh, with frequencies with the original bar graph with frequency. So it's different. So you can see here uh, that there is a maximum value around here, and here you can see that this everything is in descending order. So that's those are the Pareto charts. So now we have one more, uh, two more cases, and with that we're gonna finish uh, this section, and you're gonna have work to do. Uh, so let's let, let's uh, get us a short break. So now we're gonna work example 2.5. So examples 2.5 and 2.6, 2.6 are more elaborated uh, graphs that you are not required to learn how to do. I'm just providing this information for completeness, but if you like, to, what you're going to see is you know how to do it. And also, the scripts that I posted online in the section R scripts in, in the web page on CAM, uh, those scripts uh, provide some uh, tips on how to improve the graphs that we are learning uh, to create in this chapter, but you are not required to, to do that. You are not required to know more advanced uh, graphing with R. So I'm just giving you the, the information in just in case that in the future you might need it. So in uh, example 2.5, is about constructing bar graphs, but with horizontal bars, horizontal bars. So it's, it's more, uh, a little bit more, um, difficult than just uh, using vertical bars, but we're going to learn how to do it. So the reason of using horizontal bars is when you have long uh, uh, names for the category. So for example, he have, we have here in this case, uh, the following relative frequency distribution categorize, categorizes employ US residents by type of employment in a recent year, construct a relative frequency bar graph. So we cannot use a, a vertical graph, uh, bar graph for this um, table because the the labels for every bar are very long. Uh, so they are they are very long. So we need to use a horizontal uh, way or format to plot the the bars because in that way we have more space to to road horizontally the the different uh, categories. So. I have here uh, farming, forestry, and fishing, and this is the relative frequency, and then I have, a, I have more categories. I have five categories with long labels. So the reason of doing horizontal graphing or horizontal bars is because of these long labels. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna construct, I'm going to show you the commands. It's just two more commands than the ones that we use for, uh, for uh, vertical uh, bar graphs. So in this case, uh, I'm just entering the the variable employment that is going to contain the labels, the long labels. So I'm using just uh, as we did before, quotation marks, then the label, then I have a comma, and then I can continue in the next row. So R doesn't doesn't uh, care about you writing in a single row everything or uh, moving to the next row to enter the next label. So I'm using manufacturing, extraction, transport, transportation. But uh, a trick that I have to to have my, my long uh, uh, labels uh, not using uh, the entire row is breaking the, the, the long uh, label into parts. So I'm going to use this backslash N to break the labels in two rows. So manufacturing extraction, then I break the, the line with this uh, backlash N, then I write transportation. In this way, the graph is going to show me this label written in two rows for the same frequency, uh, relative frequency. So then I have another long name, long label, managerial, professional, and technical. So I'm using again the, the trick of using backlash N uh, to break the the line into into rows. Then I have sales and office, no problem with that. Other services, no problem with that. So I have my labels here, 
So once you have your labels, and be sure that you are using quotation marks. I'm going to show you what I did in R a moment ago when I entered this information. I forgot this quotation mark for manufacturing, and then R uh, sent me an error message that you're going to see in a moment. The next thing that you're going to do is something similar than uh, what we did before. So we need a variable for the relative frequency. Now I'm using E rel frec for employment relative frequency, and I'm entering the corresponding values for farming, manufacturing, managerial, sales, and other services, which are these five values. Then I'm going to use my, uh, my trick to uh, enter a new um, graphical window, X11. Then I'm going to use bar plot as I, I, I did before. So I'm, go I'm going to enter the relative frequency, then the names for the different categories that are in employment. So this long list of labels are going to be here. And then I'm entering a new uh, parameter for this uh, command, which is Horis. And again, everything is with uh, lowercase letters for the R command. Horis equals true. So, and true is written with capital letters. So that's the first step. So let's do that in R and let's see what happens. So I'm going to show you that I made a mistake uh, a moment ago when I was entering the information. So I have uh, enter employment here, farming, forest, and fishing correctly with the quotation uh, marks. They enter manufacturing. I forgot here the quotation marks, and I continue, and I finish with my quotation marks. And when I enter, uh, Art uh, told me, no, there is an error here, so unexpected input. So I needed to figure that out. So I usually... When you have this kind of errors, maybe you miss a comma, or maybe you miss a quotation mark, or maybe you miss a parenthesis. So check carefully your, your typing, and in that way you're gonna prevent mistakes. So I have, then I, I wrote again, employment, the first category, the second category with the quotation marks, then the third category, the four and the, the, and the last one. And remember, I'm using this backslash N, to break this line in two parts. So then I'm going to enter, that's employment. Now I'm going to enter the employment relative uh, frequency, which are just five values, 0 0.007, 0 0.203, uh, 0 0.373, and check my word because I can make mistakes, 242. And finally, 0 0.176. So those are the relative frequencies. Then I'm going to create the plot, the horizontal one. So X11 for a new window. I go back to my R console. Then I write bar plot. And I write irrel frequency. So the relative frequency for employment. The names that are... And here uh, the labels are in employment. So be careful that you enter in the name of the variable in the same way that you uh, wrote it here. If you have an extra ca character, then you need to enter the extra character. Then comma, then horis or horizontal. Don't write horizontal, just horis. Because if you write horizontal, R is going to do a different thing. So this is going to be the bar plot. So let's check what happened. So we're going to need to check the last window, and that's, those are my horizontal uh, bars. But you can see that the labels are not written in the way I expected because I'm missing something. So I'm going to show you now what is missing. So and I, I did this in purpose for you to see that when you have this kind of more complicated graph, there are more steps that you need to, to do. But you are not required for the exam, for the quizzes. So... But it's good to know this. So let's let's uh, go back to our notes to show you the, the part that I included to fix the problem. So to adjust the margins of the display, because the problem was that the margins were too narrow uh, to, to have room for the, for the horizontal bars, I need to enter this command, par mai equals and these values. This is just for margins. This is going to give me room. I'm going to give one uh, 
inch, two inches, one inch, and one inch for the different margins, uh, the top, the bottom, the left, and the, and the right one. So, and then I'm going to repeat the command, but also uh, uh, in addition to the horizontal uh, aspect or parameter, I'm going to incorporate LAS equals one, that is going to take into account the new uh, layout for my for my display. So I'm going to enter then those two uh, uh, commands, and then I'm going to be able to see uh, my my bar uh, with uh, my graph with horizontal bars, and also. So I'm going to to use another X eleven thing so for a new graph. So I go back here and I write bar then mai equals c parentheses one comma two comma one comma one then um, and i forgot the parentheses there are two parentheses to close then i'm going to write bar plot again i, I can i can call the previous one i'm just modify the i can modify using the the arrow pointing up you can go back and get the most recent one so i'm going to modify this one i'm going to enter las equals one and that's it let's see what happened now so we're gonna see the last window display and now you have what you wanted so i made room here so i i have two inches now here for this plot only one inch here only one inch here and only one inch here but two inches you can give more you can give a little bit more maybe 2.5 inches or 3 inches uh, but this is just for you to play you can play that uh, with that uh, later after class so but now you can see the labels in a horizontal way so this is the beauty of r you cannot do this with other software uh, around so this is what you you can do with r so now you have on the x axis you have the relative frequencies and now on the y axis you have the labels for each category so you can compare that that graph with the one that is uh, in your book uh, um, of, of course if you want to get the graph that is in your book you need to go a little bit more you can include the labels titles and uh, if you want to do that just check the r scripts that are in 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 the section the corresponding section in our website and you're gonna see those uh, you're gonna you're gonna be able to to get uh, these plots that are uh, shown uh, show uh, that your book is showing here so this is the horizontal uh, this is the graph with horizontal bars here so you can see the labels uh, horizontally typed and also you can have a title so that's another parameter that you can include in your in your bar plotting you can have a label for the x-axis indicating that this is a relative frequency but if you want to get this go and check the script uh, you should check the script that says chapter maybe to chapter 2 dot txt or chapter 2 uh, slash or hyphen 1 or something like that there, i have a lot of uh, scripts there for you to play if you have time and if you want so this is uh, uh, what corresponds to uh, the bar with horizontal the graph with horizontal bars. So now the last resource that we have for uh, displaying visually categorical data are pie charts. So we're gonna have pie charts on page 40. And we're gonna solve now example 2.6, that's the last one uh, for, for this uh, section. So example 2.6 is uh, constructing a pie chart for the credit card data in table 2.3. What is this table? Is the table that includes frequencies and relative frequencies for the credit card customers. So we're gonna use, uh, and this, this, these pie charts are very easy to do, but if you want to get fancy, again, check the scripts that I posted online and you can learn how to get the beautiful scripts with colors and shapes. You can also get a three-dimensional pie chart if you want I include a script for that so for this problem you only need to to use the previous variable CC equals and these are the five categories for credit cards then we're going to use the variable freak again 
uh, that contains the frequencies 11, 23, 9, and 7. Then you can uh, get the relative frequency either by enumerating, as we did in the, in the first problem, or you can get the relative frequency just by dividing frequency by the sum of frequencies. So this is actually a formula to get also the relative frequencies. So I'm going to do this now. And then you get the pi by using this, uh, this command. So this is a, a very uh, simple pie chart. So you're going to miss uh, uh, labels, percentages, and things like that. If you want to get fancy, as I mentioned before, then you need to, to check the script that is posted um, on our website. So let me finish this uh, section by uh, working on the pie chart. So we're going to get again. We have CC somewhere. So I'm going back. I have CC here. So I am entering CC again. Oh, it's already there, but I'm just for completeness. I'm going to have. I'm going back by using the app, uh, the arrow pointing up. We have frequencies again. That's it. But now I'm going to compute the relative frequency by using a formula instead of using C uh, parentheses and, and the values. I'm going to get the formula by dividing the frequency values over the sum of those frequency values. So now we have the relative frequency. We can see the relative frequencies now that they are the same that we did we, we got before. So 0 0.22, 0 0.46, 18, and 14. So I'm going to get the pi chart by using just the pi command, the relative frequencies. And the labels are going to be just the CC, the, CC, the ones that are in the CC variable. Uh, I totally forgot uh, to create a new window, so I'm going to check the last one because now uh, remember there was a horizontal uh, a bar, uh, uh, graph with horizontal bars. Now it uh, disappeared because I forgot X11, but I got now the pie chart. So this pie chart is not as beautiful as the one that you have in your book. But I mentioned, if you want to get the, the, the kind of uh, pie chart that is in your book, you need to work a little bit more with your, your R commands. It's not required. I just want you to use your R commands in the very, in the most simple and the simplest way as, as possible. So let's finish this. I'm going to give you your assignment that you need to turn in after you finish uh, watching this. This video, but let me show you. This is the pie chart that is in your book. So it's beautiful with different colors, percentages, a title, and you can do that. There is a script to get a similar pie chart. Just check the scripts. This is just for people that uh, want to do a little bit more with the R, but it's not necessary for, for the rest. So let me finish uh, just giving you the assignment for this section. So the assignment is just. Uh, you're gonna work uh, some problems from the uh, from the book, so you're gonna solve from section 2.1 uh, exercise set on page 46. We have three problems for for you. I have problem 24. So let me see where uh, 24. So this is uh, problem 24. So you're going to work only part A, part B, and part uh, C. Uh, you can also work part D because we, we, we work on. Pareto charts, and you can work on part E because we constructed the pie chart. So, yeah, and you can also answer the last two questions, true false questions. So, uh, it's the entire problem. So, then you have problem 26. So, problem 26, and you're going to construct a frequency bar, relative frequency, a pie chart. Yeah. The entire problem, all the all the all the uh, parts that this uh, problem has, and then problem 29. So problem 29 is uh, about.
about let me write here problem 29 i'm going to show you in a minute the the information so again uh, you're gonna do everything that is required so let me show you problem 24 first uh, 24 problem 24 you're gonna need this information so you need this table uh, you already have here the frequency distribution so you you are given the frequency distribution so you have uh, different continents and population so take a screenshot if you don't have your book yet i'm just going to give you a couple of more uh, seconds to do that and then we have the the, the questions you're going to construct a frequency bar graph a relative frequency distribution then the corresponding graph uh, then a relative frequency Pareto chart, a pie chart, and then you have two questions, true or false. So take a, a screenshot of, of this part, and then I'm going to move up. I'm going to, uh, to give you now problem 26. Problem 26, now you have another table here. So you have an entire problem here. So uh, this is about another frequency distribution. You have different responses, four different responses with their corresponding frequencies, and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna construct bar graphs. You're gonna construct a, a pie chart. This time you are not required to do a Pareto chart, just a pie chart. And finally, we have problem 21, 29. Problem 29 is about singers and Twitter followers. So take a screenshot of this information, this frequency distribution uh, with five singers, very famous singers, and then you're gonna answer these questions. You're gonna uh, construct a frequency bar graph, relative frequency distribution, uh, a pie chart, and also you're going to answer a question. And there are more problems here. So uh, because you are using R, you can just play a lot with these problems in, in, this, in this book. So this is the end of section 2.1. So uh, send me your um, assignment uh, through uh, the classwork uh, section in your in, in, on canvas and using the submit button you're going to need to create a pdf file with your screenshots